So today, number one, uh, I guess really number seven on our list here is systems, okay? Now, there's really a few different kinds of systems that people need to have in place. And if you're sitting at your house and you're having to hang out with your kids and, and that kind of stuff, if you need to just be like working, maybe there's some things that you could be working on your business if you're not working in your business as much right this second. Now, I still get that obviously people are crazy busy, but if you have time right now because of the fact that you're having to be forced into your house and, and that, if you have some time, work on your systems, okay? So what systems should you be working on? Okay, well, I'll give you three different examples of ones that I think you should work on right now and have and, and get in place if you don't already have them in place. What's up, Allie? What's up, Bill? What's up, Daniel? Appreciate y'all for watching live. Okay, so number one system would be marketing, right? So obviously you need to have some kind of marketing system. In our case, we've been sharing all kinds of different things here, but you know, something with marketing, right? This can be like lead generation. This is how are you growing your business on a daily basis, right? Or on a consistent basis. And how, how do you, do you have any kind of systems in place for that, right? Does it always require you to be involved in order to, um, you know, keep the shit moving forward? Or do you have any kind of system in place that can be generating leads and doing that kind of stuff? You know, I put a screenshot earlier today because yesterday I got a, I got a listing from a, uh, from a realtor here in Denver, or he's in Parker or something like that, like kind of Southeast Denver. And I got a listing from him and I ran an ad with it yesterday. Now I was just trying to generate name, email, phone number. I wasn't looking for what's the highest quality leads I can generate. I was more looking for quantity. And so I was going for name, email, phone number, but you can see the screenshot I put up. It ended up costing me like 32 cents a lead or something like that. Right. Um, you can have systems in place the same way. So I, I have systems where, you know, that'll do, generate the lead. The lead goes into an automation um, using KLT CRM. And then from the automation, you know, that's converting into appointments, into conversations and that kind of thing, right? So if you don't have a system in place today for your marketing, think about that. What can you put in place right now? What can you put in place so that even in these times of lockdowns or whatever, right? If you have great systems in place, oftentimes it's not that effective. You know, you can tell that people are still interested in real estate because in the last 24 hours, like I said, I generated 21 home buyer leads in Denver for like $20 or something. I think it was like, uh, no, way, way less than that because it was like $6 or something. I don't know, like six bucks I think I spent to generate 20, 21 leads in the last 24 hours, right? So what kind of marketing system do you have in place today? Okay, the next thing is you need to have some kind of database system, right? So... Do you, have a, do you have a database system in place? What are you doing to stay in touch with the people who already know, like, and trust you? If you don't have a system today, work on that, right? Like, um, I think you should just send once a week emails on uh, Thursday afternoons. People are chilling. They're already thinking about the weekends. You have their attention. So write them an email every Thursday afternoon. And it doesn't have to always be around mortgage or real estate or whatever it is that you do. This really should be more about you and what you have going on, right? So talking about personal stories, client stories, client testimonials, things that you find online that um, you think are shareable and are worthy of other people paying attention to. So it's these kind of things that really are more impactful than trying to demonstrate your knowledge and your expertise inside of the emails. It's more about creating connection and owning some space within their mind. And then on top of you know that weekly email, having a retargeting system, right? And having some sort of videos that are staying in front of your database and the people that have already shown interest in what you have going on on your business page through just really cheap, you know, in our, in our case, we call it the Cerberus guard dog method and it costs $3 a day and it keeps you in front of your entire database and anybody who's, anybody who's shown interest. So what can you be doing right now? If you have some time, what can you do to be working on your database? Well, you could schedule out emails. So, I'm not a huge fan of using whatever the can stuff is, but you could go and pre-write emails out maybe for the next couple of months, right? Maybe you get enough emails written out. In, in a couple of hours, you can write out uh, one quarter's worth of emails, right? Because that's only 12 emails per quarter. So it's not a huge amount. You only need to write about one email per day in terms of just staying in touch with people and then having that retargeting thing in place. So take, think about that, right? Could you take a little bit of time tomorrow or next week and could you get the, all your emails in place so that you have a database system that you know is gonna be consistently going out? Because where people lose, everybody recognizes that the database is important. I'm sure you do as well, right? What's up, Brian? What's up, Daniel? And, but, but what they do is they try to do it in real time. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna write the emails every week and send it to them in real time. And, and it never works, 
right? You get behind, you miss a week, now you feel bad, you miss the next week and you feel worse, now all of a sudden you just stop doing it. And then before you know it, you realize that a month or six weeks has passed and your database has not heard from you by email. So that's why it's way more effective if you can, um, <clears throat> it's way more effective if you can have some things pre-scheduled and have it where you know it's gonna go out but ideally, it's something that you've written, right? So it feels really personal. It's in your lingo, your dialect, all the kind of ways that you talk. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, so do your so work on your database, right? They're out there. The database is really the gold mine. It's the thing that you've worked so hard to create. So make sure that you're doing something to keep yourself in front of them and continue to build that relationship. Don't just let those people fall away because you're focused on getting new business and new leads. So make sure you have some kind of system in place for your database, all right? And lastly, is for, for, you know, in terms of having systems in place, are you doing live events, right? What kind of events are you doing? Now, obviously, I totally understand that right now is kind of a weird time. I spent two hours this morning, a little over two hours, doing a live training for realtors in Denver. And normally, we would have done that in person. And for sure, it's not the same as doing it in person. It's definitely, uh, definitely way more valuable doing the training in person than doing it online. But... Right now, we just have to, we have to adapt a little bit. But in general, as a general statement, what are you doing for live events? So real quick, you know, there's like 20 people on here. Drop a comment and let me know. When is the last live event you held? Whether that was a training or a database event or, you know, what's the last time that you hosted a party or some type of event for anybody? Okay, drop me a comment and let me know about that. So in terms of events, depending on if you're a loan officer or a realtor, or you know what exactly your role is, you want to have some different types of events, right? You want to be having. Um, in in my case, if you're a loan officer, I think you should be doing at least once a month live events for real estate agents, where you're teaching and helping and training them, not teaching them about new mortgage products, but you're teaching them stuff that's going to be impactful to their own personal business. You know how to do Facebook marketing, YouTube marketing, Google marketing, SEO, online reviews, any of these kind of things where Somebody can come to your training, implement it in their business, and go out and get more business and bring that uh, back to you. And that's never going to happen just from teaching them, um, you know, about the new VA loan updates. You just do that yourself. Yeah, the LOD panel we did, that was awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. It was cool seeing you guys on there. So what can you do with live events? So with realtors, you should be doing maybe once a week live events for real estate agents. But then for your database, you need to be doing live events for your database, right? And depending on how often you're doing that, which... I mean, based on the lack of c comments and response when I asked the question, I'm assuming that in general you're not, you don't even know the last time that you did a live event. So then maybe you think about that, right? Is how, when is the next time you can plan one? Now, again, I get that right now it's kind of whack. So maybe be planning one for the fall, right? Start working on it now and have a, an event that you're planning out with, um, you know, with, like in September, right? That's we had to move our event that was happening in March. We had to move it to September, so maybe think about that. Maybe you need to go out three or four months, five months, six months in order to you know, start planning events out that way. But what could you do right, in order to do a live event for your database and just get in front of them? One really simple idea, it actually comes from the Loan Officer Strategy Guide, is doing a, is doing a movie night. It's the easiest, easiest um, database event that you can do. Right, Go to your local movie theater, see when they're slow, um, get rent a room, rent one theater out, for that night and get a package deal where they're going to include the movie, a popcorn and a soda for each person that comes and um, invite all your database there. Ideally have some kind of like golden ticket, almost like Willy Wonka style tickets to invite people. If you can splurge it, get a background set up with a step and repeat banner, get people to stand in front of there, have a photographer there, take pictures, post all those pictures on your Facebook business page and people can tag themselves you know, on, the, on all those photos. And anyways, the people that I know that run these movie events, 100% of the time they run the movie event, it's profitable before the event ever starts. Meaning that just based on the fact that they're inviting people to the event, they're getting business off of just the invitations, right? So it's always a break-even event, 100% of the time. I've never heard of one person tell me, I ran the movie night and it ended up costing me money. Because everybody says, yeah, it costs some money, but they got it back before the event ever happened because of the fact that they, um, you know, that, that event just kills really, really well. So, so events, right? Just think about that. And again, it's not that you have to be smashing out a ton of events right now in this wacky time, 
but just to be prepared, right? What event can you have set now for August or September? What can you have set for November? What can you have set for March next year, right? These kind of things and where you plan it out and you just know that in this, in quarter one, I do a movie event. In quarter two, I do a trampoline park. In quarter three, we do a, you know, or Easter egg hunt in quarter two. Quarter three, trampoline park, right? However you do your your things. Quarter four um, could be could be like a, a pot, pumpkin carving event, you know, that kind of thing, right? So we'll be looking at events. Look at your systems and see. I mean, right now, it's just a great time if you're if you're having to take some downtime. Not get not everybody is. Okay, but if you're being forced into taking some downtime or you can't work at the same capacity in your office, it's a time that you can look at your own personal marketing and how can you be able to put some of this in place for yourself. Okay, so that's number seven is your systems.